Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and today we're going to be talking about general weather forecast around Australia, which will include some heavy rainfall for parts of southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales, a strong cold front on the cards now for Western Australia, and some rainfall and severe weather possible along the southern New South Wales coastline in the next three to five days. Then we're going to move up north and take a look at the tropic threat in the Philippine Sea, that strong typhoon still on the cards at this time. We're going to be talking about that and what impact it may or may not have for the Australian continent. Now let's get started straight away with some rainfall that's now streaming in ashore around the Gold Coast and New South Wales. It's nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy, but you can see over the past 12 hours we've had some good cloud cover start to build up across southeastern Queensland and throughout the course of today because of a weak cold front and low pressure system in the Tasman Sea there will be some low level cloud streaming ashore around the Brisbane Gold Coast area delivering some heavy accumulations in that neck of the woods. It's not really uh, heavy at this time right now but over the course of today the rainfall will continue to pick up especially inland as well east of Toowoomba uh, towards the west rather of Toowoomba out towards St George there will be some heavy rainfall out there and then especially into tomorrow morning and evening there will also be some rain and thunderstorms just offshore which could bring at the odd very heavy shower uh, along the coastline we could be talking about rainfall accumulations reach 50 to 60 millimeters uh, every day there but in short over the next three days nothing crazy in terms of rainfall expected just 30 millimeters or so along along the coastline and as you get towards the coastline even less rainfall 10 to 15 millimeters it's not really worth talking about but because those showers will be quite heavy just offshore from the coastline if they do get themselves along the coast then there is certainly the chance of flash flooding so it's always worth a mention uh, especially in very saturated um, catchments up around the Gold Coast and so forth. The GFS model expecting just a little bit more rainfall um, along a lot of the coastline, maybe about 15 to 20 millimetres there. The Axis G3 as well, calling for a little bit more than the East and West model and the Icon model as well. Not calling for a ridiculous amount of rainfall, as you can see as it loads in here, but it will be, again, predominantly just offshore uh, with a little bit of rainfall inland towards the west of Toowoomba. Nothing crazy is expected um, over the next three days at least but there could still be one or two heavy showers that get themselves jammed along the coastline and sky the or oh, shoot the rainfall accumulations around the gold coast coomer up towards brisbane and redcliffe up through the roof so we'll just have to wait and see just exercise caution if you're on the roads because they could be wet and slippery over the coming few days but tonight and into friday night as well there is a chance of some wet conditions in and around the brisbane area now we've also got uh the new south wales coastline as well which we will talk about because we have that low pressure system uh, system in the Tasman Sea at this time or it's just brushing past south of Tasmania at this time and it's one of those fronts that kind of creeps up from the south in that sort of heading in a northeasterly direction um, and this is certainly one of those uh, classic examples of a front that does exactly that and there will be of course the chance of some snow as well on those uh, high elevations in Tasmania especially tonight into Friday morning so we'll have to wait and see what actually happens there in terms of total snowfall accumulation over the next three three to five days, there actually will be quite a lot and it will be quite widespread in Tasmania. A couple of centimetres here and there, extending all down the southern parts of the mountains. Nothing too major around uh, Mount Wellington or any uh, major population centre like that, but inland around Queenstown, Strawn, Roseberry, um, and even around Cradle Mountain, Taralea, there could be the chance of some decent snowfall accumulations there. And not um, forgetting over and towards the eastern part, I forget the name of the mountains through here, but they're around... Uh, they're expecting around half a centimetre to a centimetre of settling snow as well. So a good snowfall accumulation is certainly possible in the next 24 hours to three days by the looks of things on this forecast. And yet, once, like I said, the majority of it will be happening throughout the course of Friday, especially into Friday night. Uh, but that is kind of beside the point because once this uh, rain and snow gets itself up in towards the Tasman Sea, it will actually drive what could be a severe weather event Saturday morning into Saturday evening. There could be some damaging winds along the New South Wales coastline associated with this low pressure system here. We're talking about winds sustained of around 70 to 80 kilometres an hour, gusting to about 120 kilometres an hour in places, maybe just 110, but still some very gusty winds are expected throughout Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon and evening. And as a result, Saturday evening and into Sunday morning, the wave heights are going to be very high along the New South Wales coastline. So if you are in and around the water, um, 
around Bondi or uh, other beaches around New South Wales, then make sure you are exercising extreme caution surfing or swimming because these waves are going to be very, very big indeed. We're talking five metres as they get themselves up towards Newcastle, maybe even six metres just offshore. So definitely do not go boating Saturday and into Sunday morning and even into Sunday evening for the matter, uh, as a matter of fact, because those waves will continue right through uh, the weekend. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you are taking things very, very easy in and around the water. Some good rainfall can also be expected as well as with a weather event like this, maybe 50 millimetres or so Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Sunday is when the rain should ease off. There shouldn't be any rainfall or any registering rainfall along inland areas, maybe just along the coastline throughout the course of Sunday. But definitely uh, Saturday, there will be a bit of rainfall along the coastline, extending it right up from Malakuta through Newcastle, Turi, and maybe as far north as Coffs Harbour before it turns into strong thunderstorms. In terms of peak rainfall accumulations, over the next five days, 50 to 80 millimetres is kind of the number that we're talking about here. Newcastle should cop about 50 millimetres. Uh, further north towards Forster, maybe about 80 millimetres or so. But it's really going to be coastal based. Wollongong only expecting 10 millimetres or so. It's the Sydney Metro, 10 millimetres. But as you get further inland towards uh, where the university is, you may be only talking about a millimetre or two. And even as far inland as Penrith, you're basically talking about nothing in terms of rainfall. So it's going to be one of those weird ways weather events where the coast gets hammered with rainfall but as you get further inland nothing uh, in terms of rainfall is registered there uh, so yeah it will be an interesting weather event that's basically a set in stone at this time high winds strong waves as well throughout Saturday evening into Sunday morning uh, that wind threat certainly will continue through Sunday uh, but it should hopefully ease off uh, by Monday by the looks of things. Yeah, that does look like the case here. And then it moves further up the coast towards northern New South Wales and the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast and that area, which could get some severe weather Sunday evening into Monday morning. In short, I expect hazardous surf warnings to be raised uh, maybe tomorrow morning or even into tomorrow evening. Uh, also expecting damaging winds um, to be a main threat as well for the coastal areas. Higher waves and maybe heavy rainfall in one or two spots. But we will have to wait and see what actually happens there. Pretty interesting though on the forecast and we're going to have to wait and see how this one pans out. And before we go and take a look at the typhoon which is kind of the main story of this video considering how boring the Australian weather is right now we're going to talk about southwest and western Australia still in extreme drought and that's going to be the case right through the remainder of this week until about Wednesday when some rainfall is expected to hopefully uh, wet the soils around the Perth area but yeah around Perth the entire Perth metro under extreme drought conditions right now and that extends inland as well into communities in the wheat belt and even into the gold fields extreme or severe to extreme and exceptional drought conditions are being experienced through there which is just very heartbreaking to see but hopefully some of that does get broken with the passage of what could be a reasonably strong cold front later on this week or later on next week if we were to take a look at the forecast you can already see on monday we're expecting some rainfall to line itself up on the coastline but it only impacts areas on uh, southwest and western Australia. Uh, but it looks like by Wednesday, we're starting to see another cold front bo uh, boot up and through Thursday, it impacts the uh, lower west region, especially and even into the south coastal. There could be 10 millimeters or so from that. And then on Saturday, we're expecting another strong cold front to move through. And this one is the real deal. We could be seeing some significant rainfall across a lot of the southern, uh, southwestern parts of western Australia, which would be fantastic. Dying for a little bit of rainfall around Stirling Range National Park. I'm going hiking there in the middle of June, so I'd love a little bit of rainfall to start uh, happening there to really uh, dampen up the uh, grounds and make it a little bit greener. Uh, but yeah, you can expect a video of that on the Cyclones Oz channel. I'll be filming every moment of that. Should be a great time. I'll be keeping guys all posted. But again, the Access G3 calling for a nice front to boot itself up just offshore, but it doesn't look like it makes it. It withers away Friday uh, just before it gets itself ashore, but still has the chance to drop some good rainfall in terms of absolute rainfall accumulations around the Perth area, 15 millimetres over the next 10 days. Very similar amount to what the Eastern Bf is calling for and the GFS kind of going for a wetter than average scenario, but it is mostly just offshore, 20 millimetres of the south corner of Western Australia. But it looks like the majority of that rainfall is going to start up from that cold front that the Eastern Bf has late on Saturday. Again, we will have to wait and see with this forecast here. It's an interesting one, but it is still 10 days out. And there is a lot of variables at play and a lot of uncertainty still to be talking about. Yeah. <laughs> 
That is a long-winded Australian forecast, especially for how little is going on right now. We're going to pull this forecast back to this weekend and move up into the Philippine Sea because this typhoon, I dare I say, is a go-go now. The GFS now very much on board with a pretty steady track forecast for this typhoon moving through the Mariana Islands and into the Philippine Sea, not really impacting the Philippines in any capacity whatsoever, but sort of impacting the Mariana Islands. And I'll show you what I mean by that throughout the forecast. It forms throughout the course of Monday, rapidly intensifying actually Monday evening and into Tuesday morning, becoming a full-blown tropical storm by the looks of things uh, on Tuesday and then typhoon uh, by Wednesday by the looks of things before moving through Guam and the southern reaches of the Mariana Islands as what will be a strengthening typhoon at this time with peak winds of around 100 kilometers an hour. That's about 55 knots and strengthening will likely to be seeing a storm slightly stronger than that, 110 kilometers an hour or so. You're getting closer to 65 knots at this point. So a full-blown typhoon expected to move through the Mariana Islands by the middle or late parts of next week, Wednesday and Thursday. We'll have to wait and see on the forecast at that point before moving deeper into the Philippines and becoming a pretty powerful typhoon and becoming a powerful typhoon really fast as well. Now we're starting to talk about late May and into early June at this point. So again, uh, the conditions are going to be very good for this typhoon to rapidly intensify in this part of the Philippine Sea. Sea surface temperatures are already going to be approaching 30 to 31 degrees in this part of the Philippine Sea, and they're going to be very warm a lot further north of the typhoon as well. Now, we have seen systems before move through the Mariana Islands and beeline it for the Philippines. That would be a pretty oddball track to take, especially this time of the year with the Japanese monsoon starting to enhance itself. So I don't think that the, Japan, uh, that the Philippine threat is a possibility at this time, but it could blow through the Ryukyu Islands or up towards the Gasawara, uh, later in the uh, well, in the later parts of the fortnight or even into the uh, early parts of next month. We're going to have to wait and see on this forecast here. Uh, in short, not 100% sure on what's going to be happening at this time, but we already start to have a pretty good idea on what track is forecast. The Eastern Reef, very confident with this track moving through uh, the Philippine Sea as well, so we'll have to keep a close eye on this one here. You can see its outline here. Uh, the GFS model as well, you've got that very distinctive uh, high-energy track at this point. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to go for the Philippines at any point in its life, but it could swing itself up towards Japan or Agasa Oara. Again, we'll have to wait and see. There'll be plenty more coverage on this channel. It doesn't look like it's going to be an Australian typhoon threat anymore. So that is the good news. That's for sure. Um, well, not, it was never an Australian typhoon threat, rather that really just clicked on me than what I just said. But we were talking about a big time fire event possible through the Northern Territory. But if you look at fire danger ratings over the next 10 days, they're sitting at high to very high across the Northern Territory, which is stock standard. And considering a week ago, we were looking at extreme fire danger ratings possible, which would have resulted in a fire event up in the Northern Territory and into Western Australia as well. This is very much some good news. Again, I've said this about 800 times this video, it is a wait and see sort of weather event. These aren't sort of close uh, knit weather events at this time. We're sort of talking about 10 days out, especially with the WA forecast into the Philippine Sea. So like I said, wait and see on what the forecast has in uh, for us. But yeah, that is certainly enough uh, to uh, talk on the weather for the Australian forecast today. If you have enjoyed this video, then make sure you do leave a like on it and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now. If there's anything in particular that you want covered in future videos, then please do leave it in the comment section down below. Sorry for lack of a video. Video update yesterday. I sort of had a one day sickness. I'm starting to come off it now. I do feel a lot better. Uh, but yeah, I do apologize for the lack of a video update yesterday. Uh, but yeah, that is all for me and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.